Welcome back to the shop. <clears throat> uh, here we are, again, in the cycle cart shop for the Cycle Cart Adventure Channel. This is Shop Talk. We got some vintage F1 on the TV here. 1988 season highlights. Like that for a little bit of atmosphere. And uh, we have quite a nice day brewing out here. Check this out. Look at that. It's looking pretty good. It's nice to have the garage doors open and uh, you might hear the occasional car go by, but that's okay. Uh, we're reaching hitherto unseen levels of sophistication here at the uh, at the shop and on my channel. Look at this. We got a ring light. Crazy. And I'm hoping that'll do wonders for a presentation. So let's see. Anywho, let's go over here. I guess this is what passes for like a awards uh, cabinet here at the shop. We got the vulture silhouette here. Obviously, you know why I have a vulture silhouette, right? Because of the car, man. It's called the vulture. Anyways, uh, we're going to hang this nice Mercedes-Benz uh, plaque that I got at... It's called Beaulieu, but they call it Beaulieu in England. When we were in uh, England the last time, it's like a car museum. I have some pictures from there. I'll probably put them up as I'm talking right now. So I got this at the gift shop. I'm putting that up. It's also where I got this thing that I want to show you. My Mercedes-Benz keychain from Vulture. The Vulture has a key start, and there it is, Mercedes-Benz. And then we're going to hang this, which is the plaque that we got last summer, Nick and I. He really convinced me to go to this car show and enter the sort of judging contest, and I did. And I was glad I did, because we won the best replica category. And we won against, like, road legal cars like we won against a cobra that was like a fabulous looking car can't believe we won but we did and that was all uh, nick really let's face it then another thing i got this excellent youtube uh, 1000 subscribers plaque from nick and he made this himself and he gave me this you saw the video uh, earlier he gave me this on my birthday and it so happens that it was just around the time I passed a thousand subscribers. He came up with this all on his own, built it. My dad helped him a little bit, but he built it all by himself. What a guy, huh? So let's work on the chain a little bit, okay? So we have this fabulous chain, performance, competition chain, because, you know, it's all very performance oriented here. <laughs> uh, let's see. Definitely looks cool. Um, and it's probably a bit greasy, which is good, I think. Let's see what's happening in F1, F188. 10 second pit stop. That was what they considered quick back then. There goes Senna. Hey, okay. greatest racer of all time. That's gonna spark a that's gonna spark a debate on the comments. Go ahead, tell me who you think the greatest F1 driver of all time is. Go ahead, write it in there. I have good arguments for Senna. Anywho, what we're going to do, oh, we got to take the old chain off. Let's try and keep this someplace relatively clean. All right, we got to pull this chain off of here, uh, which quite frankly is not always easy. Working with the torque converter is not really an easy job, I don't think. A bit awkward. I think some people probably like uh, messing around with mechanical stuff more than me. Although I certainly don't mind. I kind of do it for the end result, to be honest. Um, this chain can probably go away. Uh, 
the moment we'll chuck it over there with the other old chain. How's the hair looking? Mm -hmm. I've seen better. Um, so let's get the chain on there and mock it up anyway. Uh, so I guess um, we can talk a bit about uh, chain types. Uh, if you're an expert in go-kart chains and other machine chains, you can just skip on forward to the next chapter. But basically what we have here is a number 35 uh, chain. And so the sprockets are number 35, the chain's number 35, it relates to the size. I don't really exactly know why it's called 35. Is it a millimeter thing? I don't really know. But uh, if you know, put it in the comments, okay? Um, basically... There's two sort of common types of chains used for this application. The 35 and the 40. And the 40, as you might imagine, is a little bigger, a little more hefty. Uh, all the sprockets are bigger, obviously, to fit the bigger chain. So I'm using a 35. I don't really know why. I just kind of started with it that way. And it seemed like the 35 uh, was easier to find in the Comet um, torque converter. I don't really know why I started that way, but I did. And it's working OK. I don't have any big complaints. So let's try and get this thing on there. The trick is, or the difficulty, is to get it on there without getting it caught uh, in the torque converter fins themselves. And a good thing for that is a coat hanger. This guy I try. It's like a broken. Uh, it's like a broken, what is this thing? Kind of a, I guess kind of a needle because it used to have an eyelid in it. So if you can see that, where's the camera over here? There we go. Yeah. Hmm. It's all right, it'll work. Or so I hope. I wonder if the neighbors are gonna think I'm, I wonder if the neighbors are gonna think I'm crazy. I'm talking to myself in the garage. Anyway, let's try and thread this sort of underneath this way. I'm sure there's somebody's got a better way to do this. Again, I'm always open to hearing always open to hearing suggestions. I'm not sure you can really see what I'm working on here. Let's turn it that way. I'm trying to get yeah see I got it caught in there. Dang. Trying to get this chain to come around. There we go. That seems to have worked, kind of. Get a bit more out so that I can so I can grab it. Not really sure if this camera angle is working for me right now. We'll leave the rest of that to hang here. But I think basically we have it kind of. There we go. Okay. Now as long as I don't get this all caught up in the in the fins, I should be okay. Here we'll thread this around. Oh, I got caught on the floor. All right, come on. Okay, okay. So there you have it. It's kind of on there. Come on now. All right. Oops. Dropped it. Okay, so let's. You know what? Always a good idea. When in doubt, pull the spark plug from the engine if you're going to turn the engine in any way. You really would hate for it to like start up. That'd be bad. Ah, uh, so here we go. So we got that guy laid on there. That's got a little. You won't be able to see that. I don't think. Maybe I'll zoom in on it. That's got a little. Uh, it comes with a link that you can undo so you can hook the chain together obviously but we're going to see in a moment um 
why this is uh, this whole setup here can sometimes be a bit problematic and you have to know about a thing called a half link which I didn't know about when I started but I figured it out or someone told me and it's a good piece of knowledge to have you can see that if I I want to get my chain sort of somewhat tightish but not super super uh, ultra super duper tight so you can see uh, here we're going to have a bit of a problem because the outside link, sort of the last link, sorry, the, the, the last link in this chain is an outside link, okay? So when you look at a chain, I'll bring the old one. It has uh, outside link, inside link, outside link, inside, or wide, narrow, wide, narrow, okay? Which is fine, right? Because if you want to link up the end of the chain, you have to have a narrow going into a wide. But in this case, that's not the case. So I would have to take that one off and have a narrow going into a wide, and that's how I'd have my chain made up into a loop. But what if your chain is too tight when it goes like this, but too loose to make it to put a sorry i'll do it up here what if your chain is too tight when it uh if it ends up like that sorry like that but too loose if you put it like this with a wide link in between so that the distance between these things between the this sprocket and that sprocket is just so that you're you're kind of halfway in between you want to put a you want to put a narrow onto a narrow you want to be like that, let's say. That's the case here. Because we've got a, um, a wide link that wants to link onto a wide link. And that's not going to happen. So, a very clever thing somebody invented. I'll show you. A thing that is called a chain offset link. There it is. Okay. And it is a narrow to wide within the it's I should look over here it's a narrow to wide within the span of one link so you can link up sort of a half it's hard to explain you can link up two narrows or two wides that's basically what it means so I'm going to use this I'm going to put it right in there and uh, the reason I'm going to do that is so that it fits and my chain will be, I think, probably good enough. I've got this arm in here so I can always expand and contract this just a little bit. It puts a little bit of strain on the on the whole system, but it's not very much. And I'll be able to um, adjust the tension. So that's what I'm going to do is put that half link in there and I'll have my chain on. And then I'll, you know, I should probably wipe this off a little bit. I think I'll do that. Be with you in a minute. So I have to admit, I'm kind of kind of lazy when it comes to taking things apart and cleaning them. I have to say, it's true. Uh, not a real big fan. So usually what I do, I like to spray a bunch of contact cleaner on stuff and then wipe it up wherever I can this way. And that's probably that's probably not the preferred method, I get it. But I only have so much patience, you know what I'm saying? I'm also quite keen, I must say, I'm also quite keen to get the vulture out for a test. So weather's starting to look nice, and this new drive system of mine is gonna need some testing and probably some debugging. I hope not, but it probably will, if history is any guide. Um, so, let's see, I guess I should put a little bit of grease on that, but I think I'll just guide it through. I might be able just to clean this up a little bit. There, you know what, just take that thing through there. Hopefully draw it out. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So, if you know an easier way to do this, feel free to leave your uh, comments in the comments. I'm always looking for some help. 
we'll thread this thing on there. While I'm doing this, I wanted to talk about a note I got today uh, from a friend of mine who was kind of saying that like, oh, geez, I'm getting caught here. He was sort of saying that the vulture is intimidating. Uh, that people at car shows, we're trying to go take cycle carts around car shows, and people at car shows are going to be intimidated by the vulture because it's too nice and they're going to think they have to build something similar and they're not going to want to build a cycle cart. And that's kind of too bad, obviously. Um, I don't particularly think the vulture is intimidating. But the thing is, it took me a really, really long time to learn and build uh, learn about the things I had to learn about and build the car uh, and I'm still not really done I mean I'm pretty close to done but I'm not like done done and I just sort of wish I could tell people like yeah it, it looks good when you condense like eight years of working and reading and sort of figuring things out into one look at a car yeah it looks great but it took forever and you know, yours doesn't have to be the weird sort of mad scientist platform that mine is. It can be simple. It can be a nice simple thing with a motor and, and one sprocket and away you go. Simple steering, simple body. It doesn't have to be weird like this one. This one's fun. I, I built it the way I want to build it. And that's really the essence of cycle karting. You build it how you want to build it. If you want it simple and uh, quick, build it that way. If you want it ornate and beautiful, like um, Mr. Reliable uh, from the Elmhurst Grand Prix, build it that way if that's what satisfies you. If you want it, you know, low and fast and and sort of performance oriented, build it that way. You get to do what you want here. We don't have you know super tight regulations or anything that we'll exclude people or whatever. Is if you come to the Elmhurst Grand Prix, you can it almost doesn't matter what you bring, you can run. Now, if your thing is super, excuse me, if your thing is like, if your cart is way out of uh, proportion, then, you know, you're gonna, um, you may not be part of the results. That's all I'm saying. But in any case, uh, don't be intimidated by, by this. This is not, this is not, I'm not like a amazing builder or a really great motor guy or anything like that. There's lots of flaws. There's lots of uh, things that didn't work right the first time that had to be done two or three times. There's no reason to uh, there's no reason to put any sort of pressure on yourself when you see this. Don't do that. Just build what you want, and it should be satisfying to you your way. That's why it's not like this isn't go kart racing. We don't have to go to a certain spec. It's not about winning. It's not about you know that kind of competition. It's just about having a good time. There's some competition in there, but it's just about having a good time. So have a good time with it. I'll see you at the car shows.